Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series on partial differential equations. And in particular, I'm going to show you how to solve an example of a so-called quasi-linear PDE via the method of characteristics. Now in previous videos I have shown you how to solve semi-linear problems where the coefficients here do not depend on you. I've also done a quasi-linear problem, a simple one called uh, Berger's equation, which has applications to um, fluid mechanics. But the, the example that I'm going to give today is, is a little bit more difficult. Okay, So essentially, um, the recurring method here, the method of characteristics, involves looking at these expressions here and trying to solve for two independent uh, solutions or first integrals and then you combine these expressions via a, a functional relationship where big F is an arbitrary but differentiable function. Okay now this is the the problem that we're going to look at here we definitely have a quasi-linear problem because this this um, derivative has a coefficient involving u so this is a quasi linear PDE So let's consider, I'm going to consider this repre representation here. Um, sometimes you can combine these and just solve by solving ordinary differential equations. This case is a little bit harder though, uh, and I want to show you another method just by sort of combining these expressions through addition or subtraction. Okay, so let's consider the following. Okay, so if I write these out with my a, B, and, and F, I'll get the following. Okay, now I'm just going to use some real basic algebra here to simplify the expressions and look for denominators that will simplify when I add or subtract these expressions together. And essentially the, the uh, basic idea is to use this. The, we have this if and only if. We have this, and this is easy to prove, okay? Okay, so if I add these two expressions, you'll see the y's in the denominator are going to cancel out. Okay, so let's leave this first one alone for now. And I'm going to get the following, just using this here. Okay, so these are going to cancel out, and the derivative is a linear operator. So I can actually break this numerator up into the following. Okay, so what do we have here now? We have the derivative of y plus u, and down here we have exactly that, y plus u. Over here we have the derivative of x with respect to t, down here we just have x. So let's combine these two and see if we can simplify. Okay, so I'm going to bring that up there. And I'll bring the y plus u up there. So let's move one of these to the other side. Uh, I'll move it like this. Okay, that's zero. Now, what is this? 
This is just a half of the derivative of x squared. And this, has, this is the same principle here. This is half of the derivative of y plus u, all squared. Okay? So, we have the following. Okay? Okay, you can, you can check this just by differentiating it. Okay, well, who cares about the half? And I get the following. Okay. Alright, so this is an important step now in the solution because essentially... I've come up with, with a function that depends on x, y, and u, whose derivative is zero. That means, essentially, if I do an integration, I'll get a constant over here, and this will disappear. So I've got, you know, either one of these. So I've got one solution so far. I need to find another independent solution. Okay? So how do I do that? Well, let's combine these again, but I'm going to take one expression away from the other. Okay? So if I look up here, and I take, say, this expression away from this expression, then the y's are going to cancel. Okay, the denominator is going to simplify. So let's see where that takes us. Okay, so you see the y is going to cancel out over here, and you're going to get a d dt of x minus y, and you've got x minus y down here. And you're going to have a u down here, and you've got a u up here. So it's very similar to the principle that we just used up here. Okay, so we bring that up there and that up there, I'm going to have the derivative of something squared, essentially. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so if I bring that up there and that up there and rearrange, I'll have something like this. Okay, so similarly to up here, this is the half of the derivative of u squared with respect to t. This is going to be half the derivative of x minus y all squared with respect to t. Okay, so I don't have to worry about the half there because I've got a zero over here. So I can simplify this down to, just like I did up here, Okay, so now we, we're in a good good position because we have come up with a second a second function of x, y, and u whose derivative is zero. That means again I've got my second, just by integration, my second expression here. Okay, so let's combine those two things and we're almost finished with our solution. Okay. So we have x squared, so just through integration. And just through integration here. We have the following. Okay, so we've got our h, we've got our j. This would be our h and j. Let's just combine them through some functional relationship. Okay, now it doesn't matter which way you combine them. Um, I'm just uh, in my notes. I've just combined this one, and I put the big F on that one. So C two equals big F of C one, where big F is an arbitrary but differentiable function.
And there we have our implicit solution. And it's common for quasi-linear problems to have implicit style solutions. Okay? So, uh, and you can check, by the way, if you go through and use implicit differentiation, chain rule, you can show that this really does satisfy the original PDE. Okay, so let's go back and, and think about the method again. We m manipulated this system just through simple manipulations. Our goal all along was to come up with these H and J by, by, by playing with these equations so that you got the derivative of one function is zero and the derivative of, an, of another function is zero. Then you just integrate and form these constants. Last step, form a functional relationship between these two functions. Okay? So, that's our solution. It's a really neat, neat way of doing these problems, especially when um, uh, the problem is, is reasonably challenging. So I, I um, encourage you to experiment and play around with the method. I'll be looking at more PDE and quasi-linear PDE in, in um, more videos to come. I hope you can join me for those presentations.